Hey everybody, welcome back again. This is a quick follow-up video to the uh, Craftsman 21 horse that I'm now calling the Sleek Black Beauty. And uh, <laughs> I got that from Car Talk, uh, Best of Car Talk podcast uh, back in the day. Um, you ought to look this one up. Uh, if you Google um, Sleek Black Beauty, it'll come up with a hit on that from a 2014 show. And what ended up happening was um, Ray, you know, the uh, younger brother, had you know he's the one that pretty much works at that shop up there the good news garage up in cambridge and at the back in the day i don't know when they'll tell you in the podcast can't remember that but the um the guys uh tommy his older brother had this um amc i think it was an ambassador or something like that that was a black uh you know sleek black beauty i guess and it was a real hunk of junk and uh, eventually uh ray got sick of uh, dealing with it and ended up junking it <laughs> didn't tell Tom. So uh, it was probably an item of contention back then. So this is my version of the sleek black beauty. And what I'm going to do, as I mentioned on the other video, is I'm going to check the engine RPMs because it just sounds slow. And so I, I readjusted the actual throttle because it was kind of hanging up to make sure that it is actually wide open throttle. And that's relative because there's a governor, but wide open throttle on the actual linkage itself so the throw is all the way back to where it would click in to do choke so that would be here so that's wide open and it goes a little further to activate the choke lever which pushes that um, butterfly at the at the uh, intake side of the car all right so again there we are wide open throttle um, i'll show you what it is right now um, and i'll show you where i i'll tell you where i think it needs to be at because that information is a little sketchy but I'll show you what I mean. All right, so as you saw from my uh, RPM gauge, <laughs> gauge, yeah, as you saw from the RPM reader, the hardline RPM uh, electronic monitor, which I have hooked up, you know, to the spark plug wire, and it's it is set for the proper one spark per revolution because you know it's going to spark every time it goes around. It doesn't care until after the intake and compression stroke, and then it'll fire in a power stroke. But you already knew that, so let's get to the topic at hand. Now here's what we got. I think and it's really hard to find online. I can't really find anything about it because uh, I think these are set up for blade speed. The tip of the blade speed is supposed to be a certain um, RPM, but this engine just sounds like it's running slow and that 3150 to me is slow. All right, I keep getting interrupted so I can't remember exactly where I left off, but I think I talked about we're going to adjust the engine RPM via the spring, and I was going to show you how that's um, hooked up and how to do this. Now, I'll tell you right now, um, if you're not sure what you're doing or you're, you're just unfamiliar with it, don't do it. Have somebody else do it. Have somebody else test it. I cannot actually find the exact engine RPM that this is supposed to be at wide open throttle for a mower like this, and I think that's because um, they go off of blade speed. I don't know how they test that, but I think they have a correlation knowing the ratio of the pulleys um, to the actual blade spindles and therefore to the uh, tips of the blade where they measure that apparently from what I'm reading online. But it just seems low to me at 3150. So I'd like to bump it up to about 3300 or so, uh, maybe 3350 and test that because if this was like a generator, you know, if this is a 21 horse generator motor, uh, you know, obviously it would be a horizontal shaft, but if it was a generator, um, it'd be running 3,600 RPM because that's how you get 60 Hertz, 3,600 RPM equals 60 Hertz. So this is how you do it on this one, at least I'm going to try to zoom up a little bit so the camera will behave, but you see right down in there. Okay. Right down in there, you see there's a spring and it's attached to a little tang which is bent and i'm sorry i'm trying to get the light in here with the camera 
but it's very tight. You got an idea right there. That is the governor spring. And that tang is bent that way because that's how they set it up when they built the engine. And that's how they set the initial um, RPMs by bending that tang based on the fact that the spring was new. Now, this engine doesn't have a whole lot of hours on it. So um, I'm assuming that either it was set maybe a little bit low or I don't know. I, I, I'm not comfortable with it at that, at that RPM. So I just want to bump it up a little bit. Now I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, I got the camera light engaged. I'm going to try to get this where you can see it. All right. Okay, so right here you can see this is the governor arm. This is connected to the governor inside the engine. What the governor does is the governor reacts um, by moving this arm uh, based on centrifugal force, <laughs> centrifugal force. So there's little weights in there. And when the engine is spinning at a certain RPM, um, it will extend the weights a certain amount. And then as, it, uh, as the RPM goes up, it will extend them fully out, essentially. And what it's designed to do is, of course, if you're running where it's sitting right there and the throttle is at that position because this is tied directly to the actual throttle plate, um, and you put a load on the motor, uh, if this was fixed, then the engine would drop down in RPM and you know performance, and this compensates for it because what ends up happening is the engine slows down per second. Those uh, weights change their profile in regards to how they're extending. And they push on a lever inside there or release on a lever depending on how the governor is designed. And then and in this case, it'll push it forward to compensate. And then when the load is released, it'll come back. That spring that ru runs along the linkage, that spring is to essentially keep tension on the rod between one lever and another because there's a certain amount of where you know certain amount of space that it goes through on those um on these little you can kind of see them right there that little plastic um uh, grommet that it fits through and without that there's a tendency for it to move around a little bit and the governor will wander and it'll start to ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, it's really, really important to have that in generators. Probably not so much in these applications, but when the engine's unloaded, it'll definitely react uh, negatively without that spring. But that's why that spring is just, a, it looks like it's doing nothing, but it actually is doing a very important role. All right, so we know that this wants to go this way uh, when it's opening the throttle up. And our spring, of course, our spring is not quite tight enough to keep it more open because it wants to pull it back and the spring wants to keep it forward. So what we end up having to do is we have to tighten that tension on the spring. We, and we do that by bending that little tang up a little bit and that tightens the tension on the spring. So instead of it sitting here, for example, when it's running at a wide open throttle, it might be like there, okay? So just a teeny bit more. Uh, you can see that this linkage is bent, but that is supposed to be that way. So I'm not going to try to straighten it because you can see the angle of attack of the actual linkage into the arm is correct. And then it uh, angles out to go to where it needs to go on the back of the carburetor, which I really can't get to right now. But it's not that's not too terribly important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in there. I can't film this. Um, well, maybe I'll try. I'll try to film it and hold the camera, but... Um, I will. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reach in there with some angled, uh, some angled needle ply, needle nose pliers, needle deck pliers, and we'll try to bend that up a little bit, and then see what we got. We can always put it back. It's not going to break it. It's a pretty heavy piece of um, metal, even if it is Chinesium. And we'll see what we got, because I'm pretty sure this needs to go up an RPM just a little bit. Okay, so I got it back a little bit. Now I'm not going to start at wide open throttle. I'll ramp it up gradually um, because I, you know, if I did it too much, I don't want the thing to over rev. So uh, I'll put you back in a stand. We'll see what we got for RPM now.
All right, so um, 3380 I'm happy with. Sounds better. Sounds where it's supposed to be. I'm not going to go any further than that. And, you know, the idle goes up too a little bit in this particular setup because I think it's the way the fuel screw is, is uh, adjusted. This is the low or idle, you know, pilot screw. And because it has got this little damn EPA thing on it, um, you have really have to break these off to adjust them. So I just brought that in and it's, it's about right. You know, 2000 RPM at idle is fine. Uh, I'm more concerned about the uh, high, wide open throttle, the high speed, because again, I want this thing to cut properly and I don't want it to crawl around like, uh, you know, grandma's freaking, you know, 1975 Buick. So basically uh, that's it. Now, again, I'm not advocating anybody doing this themselves. Um, you do this if you do this at your own risk. Don't blame me. I'm just showing you what I found and what I am doing to solve it. Now I have to put all this back together uh, and then we'll uh, take it out and give it a try because I did change the oil, change the air filter. Did I put oil in it? Yeah, I did, of course. And so we're ready to go. Um, I didn't see any need to change the spark plug. Of course, I did the fuel line. This is uh, this is really good quality. Uh, this clear uh, fuel line that I use on a lot of bikes just have to be the right size. Although the, uh, what are those things called? The spring um, hose clamps don't fit that particular line. So I just use zip ties, which is fine. I mean, this thing ain't going more than a few miles an hour. So no big deal. All right. So speaking of no big deal, um, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, catch on the next video. Thanks for watching.